Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're doing ratios. Now I've already done a ratios overview video so if you're not sure what a ratio is go and watch that one first and then come back here. In this video we're just going to be solving various ratio problems so you can see how that's done. So for my first example imagine me and my friend are kicking around on a Saturday morning one week not sure what to do so we decide to go out washing cars earn a bit of extra cash. So we see how much money we've got between us. I'm able to contribute a whopping 50p to this business venture. My friend is a bit more flush than I am. He's got a whole pound. And so we use this money to buy a bucket and a sponge and we go out washing cars all day. And it's very successful. By the end of the day we've made 90 pounds. Oh yeah. And so I'm looking forward to going away with 45 pounds, but when it comes time to splitting up the money, my friend says, hang on a second, I put in twice as much money as you did in the initial investment, so I should get twice as much of the profits as you do. Hmm. Well, reluctantly, I have to agree with his business acumen, and so we're left with the problem of having to split up 90 pounds in the same ratio as the amount we contributed originally. So firstly, well, what is this ratio? Now hopefully you can see a pound is twice as much as 50p, 50p is half a pound. So if we want to multiply this up to get them to be whole numbers on either side, obviously multiplying up a half is going to give me one, and if I times this by two as well, I'm going to get two. He's put in twice as much as me, so the ratio is one to two. So we have to try and split up the 90 pounds in the ratio one to two. Now the way you do these kind of problems is always the same. You always need to try and find out how much one part is worth. Now in order to do that, in this case, £90 is the total amount of money and we've got altogether three parts. Yeah? So one part of this £90 will go to me, two parts of the £90 goes to my friend. So there are three parts altogether and that three parts makes up the whole of the £90. So three parts equals the £90. So in order to find what one part is, and that's the trick with this, you always need to try and find out what one part is. Well, if three parts is 90 pounds, one part is just three times less. You just divide it by three. So if we divide 90 pounds by three, you're going to get 30 pounds. So the one part that I'm going to walk away with is 30 pounds. But once you know what one part is, it's easy to find out any of the other parts. My friend is going to get two parts. Well, if one part is 30 pounds, two parts is twice as much. So he will walk away with 60 pounds. Well done him. Now I should say that this is how business works in the real world. There's a reason why he gets twice as much as I do. It might seem like it's not fair, but you have to realize that with our initial investment there's always a risk associated with it. It might have tipped it down with rain all day and we could have made no money at all. We're stuck with a useless bucket and sponge and we've both lost our money and he will have lost twice as much money as me. And so to reflect that, usually, with any kind of investment, if it makes a profit, if you don't lose your, all your money, then the profits are paid out in the same ratio as the initial investment. Okay, let's do a few more examples, uh, but that's the basics. You always want to find out what one part is worth, and then use that to find out the value of the other parts. Alright, so imagine this time we've got a bit more money. 1800 pounds and we're going to split it up between two people. The first person is going to get two parts and the second person is going to get seven parts. So we're splitting it up in the ratio two to seven. And this is a very typical ratio question. It will say split up 1800 pounds in the ratio two to seven. So exactly the same as before. This is the total amount of money so we need to know the total number of parts. So in this case two plus seven gives us nine parts. And that's going to be equal to the total amount of money, which is the £1,800. So, you want to find what one part is worth. You always want to find out how much one part is worth. So, one part here. Well, if nine parts is 1800 one part is nine times less. You just divide by nine. So, we have to divide the 1800 by nine. Well, 18 divided by nine will be two. So, 1800 divided by nine will be 200. So one part here is £200. Now that we know what one part is, it's easy to find out how much everybody gets. The first person is going to get two parts. 
So they're just going to get twice as much as one part. So they're going to get 400 pounds. The second person gets seven parts. So again, you go back to your one part. One part was 200 pounds. Seven parts will be seven times as much. So times it by seven. Two sevens are 14. I do two zeros. So the second person will walk away with 1400 pounds. A good check for these kinds of questions is once you've worked out how much money each person's going to get, if you add it up, you should get back to the original amount of money. So 400 plus 1400, yeah, that's 1800 pounds. So that's a good indication that you've got it right. All right, so let's do a slightly harder example. So let's have, uh, well let's ha imagine we don't know how much the total amount of money is here. We've got two people again and they've split up some unknown amount of money in the ratio 3 to 5. What we're told is though that the first person is going to be given £150. And we have to work out how much the second person gets. So this, the money's been split up in the ratio 3 to 5. First person got 150 quid, how much did the second person get? That's the question. So again, the principle is still the same, we find out how much one part is worth. Except, we don't have the total amount of money this time, so we don't need to know the total number of parts. What we know though is that three parts is 150 pounds. So three parts will be equal to 150. Again, you want to find what one part is. And again, we just divide by 3. From 3 parts to 1 part, you divide by 3. So that's going to give us 50. So then, once you know what your 1 part is, you can find out what your 3 parts are and your 5 parts are. Well, actually, oops, we, try, we find out how much... We already know how much the 150 pounds is, how much the 3 parts is. We just have to find out what the 5 parts is. So you just multiply it by 5. So five parts, the amount that the second person is going to get here is five lots of one part, so it's five lots of 50. So this person is going to get 250 pounds, and that will be the answer. That's how much they're going to get. So just be careful. It doesn't always give you the total amount of money. If it gives you the amount of money for one person, just divide it down by how many they parts are. But you're still trying to find one part every time. That's always the method. Okay, we'll do one more example. Sometimes they can give you a ratio for more than just two things. Like with that one, it was three to five. There was two people we were splitting up the money between. But sometimes you might have three people or even more, and you can split up different things. It doesn't have to be money. So I'm going to do use a slightly different example here. Um, and we're going to start with, well, we want to find an alloy, which is a mixture of metals. You just kind of melt them down in a melting pot and mix them together. Um, and the three metals we're going to mix together, need to give us a total weight of 68 kilograms. Let's imagine that's the problem. The metals we're going to use are copper, which is given the symbol Cu, zinc, which is Zn, and tin, rather oddly, is Sn. So we're going to say that we've got three parts copper, six parts zinc, and eight parts tin. So you want to make an alloy, a mixture of these three metals, so that the total weight is 68 kilograms, but they're not going to be, it's not going to be the same amount of copper, zinc, and tin. The ratio is three parts copper, six parts zinc, and eight parts tin. So you've got to split up the 68 kilograms into three parts, six parts, and eight parts. Now on the face of it, that's quite a tricky problem. If you just try and guess and try a few numbers, you'd be here for a long time, I think. But using this method where you find out what one part is worth, it's actually very straightforward. So, that's the total weight, so you need the total number of parts. So in this case, we add up 3, 6, and 8. Well, 3 plus 6 is 9. Add another 8, you get 17. So altogether, there are 17 parts. And that total number of parts, the 17 parts, has got to be the total weight. So that's got to be the 68 kilograms. Now we find out how much one part is worth, because we always find out what one part is worth. Well, if 17 parts is 68 kilograms, one part is going to be 17 times less. We divide it by 17, which is not that straightforward. Uh, I think it will go in four times, actually, here. Yeah, four times 17. Well, four times 10 is 40. Four sevens are 28. Combine those two, I think you get 68. So one part is going to be 
four kilograms. Now I know what one part is, it's easy. To find how much copper, I times it by three. To find the amount of zinc, I times it by six. To find the amount of tin, I times it by eight. So for copper, three parts. One part is four kilograms, so three parts, three times as much, is 12 kilograms. Zinc is six parts. So again, one part is four kilograms. You must go back to the one part, times it by six this time. You're going to get 24 kilograms. And finally, the tin, eight parts of tin. So one part was four kilograms, times that by eight this time. Four eights are 32 kilograms. So the total amounts of copper, zinc, and tin that you need will be three parts is 12 kilograms. So 12 kilograms of copper, 24 kilograms of zinc, and the tin was 32 kilograms. And you'd usually write your answer out like that, with the colons in the middle. We're splitting up the copper, zinc, and tin, so that there's 12 kilograms of copper, 24 kilograms of zinc, and 32 kilograms of zinc, uh, of tin, rather. And when you add these three things together, you should get back to 68 kilograms. If you don't, if it doesn't add up to the total weight, then your answer's wrong and you need to go back and check your working out. So that's, a, that's about as hard as you're ever likely to see, but the principle's no different. With ratios, you're always trying to find out how much one part is, and then just multiply up to find all the different parts. My name's Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.